United States willing to make a specific allocation for Ukrainian refugees? And for President Duda, I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States to specifically accept more refugees. Okay. <laughs> a friend in need is a friend in need. <laughs> That's our vice president, and she went to Europe. Laughing again at a very serious question about America's role. This administration does not really want to go against Putin. They want him as a, a partner in climate change. They want him in a, as a partner in the Iran deal. Here's Kamala Harris with really no answers uh, when asked about gasoline prices. Watch how she responds. Look. How long should Americans expect? How long should we be bracing for um, this really sort of um, historic inflation and some unprecedented gas prices. Sure. In terms of uh, the discussions that the president, Johannes, and I had, uh, they ranged in subject, including the issue of the Black Sea, and I'll let him explain in more detail as he would like. You may have noticed this week that your gas prices have gone up. I want to talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. But part of this is on the oil companies. Right now, there are 9,000 approved unused permits that oil and gas companies could tap into now to ramp up production. The only way to protect the United States over the long term is to become energy independent. That's why the president has been so focused on investing in clean energy technologies so that we can rely on that and not President Putin to set the price of gas. If we don't stop using fossil fuels, we're all dead doing away with any subsidies for fossil fuels, number one. Number two, holding them liable for what they have done, particularly in those cases where you're underserved neighborhoods and you, you know the deal, okay? And by the way, when they don't or when they're deliberate, put them in jail. Kiddo, I want you to just take a look, okay? You don't have to agree, but I want you to look in my eyes. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel, and I am not going to cooperate with them, okay? Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, we would, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. All right, this has always been their goal. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. As you know, of course, uh, oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC. And they made a decision yesterday that they were not going to increase beyond what they were already planning. I'm here, standing here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank, talking about what we have in terms of the eastern flank and our NATO allies. I want to be very clear. The United States and Poland are united in what we have done and are prepared to do to help Ukraine and the people of Ukraine. Full stop. We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see, and because we've seen it or not, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. But just limited to what we have seen. Oh dear God, this is a total disaster. She is not prepared. She isn't grasping issues and solutions, and she rambles. Reliance on a single foreign supplier can leave a nation vulnerable to extortion and intimidation. That is why we congratulate European states such as Poland for leading the construction of a Baltic pipeline so that nations are not dependent on Russia to meet their energy needs. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we are committed to maintaining our independence from the encroachment of expansionist foreign powers. 
uh, energy is a much different story than normal trade. And you have a country like Poland that won't accept the gas. You take a look at some of the countries that won't accept it because they don't want to be captive to Russia. But Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. So we're supposed to protect Germany, but they're getting their energy from Russia. Explain that. And it can't be explained. You know that. An incredible thing that have, it's happened over the last few years, a lot of great things, and you're paying, what, $2 a gallon for your gasoline? That's okay. You know what that's like? That's like a tax cut. That's bigger than a tax cut. If Biden got in, you'd be paying $7, $8, $9. Didn't they say, get rid of your car? We're going to build some more windmills. And gas prices, you like that $2 gas, right? How about $5, $6, and $7? Darling, let's sell the car. It's a little bit too large. Let's get a compact. Biden's plan is an economic death sentence. It's Russia's fault. It's going to go up. <laughs> Can't do much right now. Russia's responsible. A united response to Putin's aggression has been my overriding focus to keep all NATO and all of the EU and our allies totally united. Today, we remain united. We remain united in our purpose to keep pressure mounting on Putin and his war machine. Your fight is our fight. 2017 will be the year of offense. All of us will go back to Washington and we will push the case against Russia. Enough of a Russian aggression. It is time for them to pay a heavier price. What we call disinformation, and it was designed to get you to support a war against Russia. Now, maybe you support a war against Russia anyway, but you should at least know that you're being lied to and manipulated, which you are. Watch this segment from Good Morning America the other day. Ukraine's mothers, daughters, teachers, politicians, beauty queens, now on the front lines defending their country under siege. And there is Anastasia Lena, a former Miss Grand Ukraine. Photos of her on Instagram in fatigues, rifle in hand. Underneath, patriotic hashtags. Miss Ukraine with a rifle, defending her homeland. Is there anything more inspiring than that? It'd be more inspiring if it was real. It wasn't. It was fake. Miss Ukraine was not defending her homeland. That wasn't a rifle. It was an airsoft gun. So the whole thing was not a news story, though you read it as such. It was a propaganda shoot. It was meant to deceive you. We are all in the midst of a turning point. We have the technology to transition to a zero emission fleet. We can address the climate crisis and grow our economy at the same time. And I am here today to say, together, we all are doing just that. So the Biden administration's solution to rising gas prices is you should be Stephen Colbert. Why don't you have a $150,000 electric car? What's wrong with you? That's Pete Buttigieg's solution. Here he is. Clean transportation can bring significant cost savings for the American people as well. Last month, we announced a $5 billion investment to build out a nationwide electric vehicle charging network so the people from rural to suburban to urban communities can all benefit from the gas savings of driving an EV. 